Okay, welcome everyone to the fourth Q&A with the founder of the Jim's Group and Jim's Mowing and all the other divisions. Uh, Jim Penman, how are you, Jim? I'm good. I know you've been on a pretty busy man this week or the coming weeks because you've been doing a lot of media. I know that people would have seen you on Sunrise. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, a live feed across from your house. How was that? How'd you find that experience in the live TV? Oh, I've done live TV before. The, the funny thing is I only told my wife about 10 to the previous night that somebody was coming to our house. So she immediately went frantic, getting the whole place tidied up, and uh, then it was done as the gate. So yeah, no, you did well. You, you came off really well. I think it was with Koshi and Samantha. And it was like a six-minute, seven-minute segment. So if anyone wants to watch a replay of that, it's available on the Jim's Group Facebook page. So tonight, similar sort of format. We'll do it for around half an hour. Um, give us a thumbs up or comment or some sort of engagement on the on here to let us know you're here. Put a question in there. We will try and get to it. I've got a bunch of questions left beforehand, which we'll answer prior. And as your questions come through, I'll filter them into Jim. Hi, James Bridge there. James Bridge says hi. Hi, James. Hi, James. Thanks for tuning in. He's a mowing franchisee from Brisbane, and he's back watching again. So we appreciate you coming back and watching. I know Jim does, and I do as well. So Yeah, we do too. Hi, James. Okay, so let's get into the first question. And it's quite uh, appropriate, obviously, with the release of the new book. So the first question comes from Paul Donahue via Facebook, and he says, Jim, I see you have a new book. Can you tell me a bit about it, and is it available in audiobook? So this is the book here. It's aptly named Jim's Book. Mm. So um, this came out, and um, Jim's been doing a lot of media, if you've seen in the paper or online or on TV recently regarding this book. So can you maybe just elaborate a bit on this? Well, it's a, it's a, a what's and all story. It's not my account. It's more than 100 people that uh, Catherine, this lady Catherine, did, and uh, got a lot of different views. I'm not sure I agree with everything that was said, but still, it, it is, a, it is a, meant to be a what's and all account, and it's, it's good. As to whether it's available on audio book, um, not yet. I think it's come out in the old boring way with a, a print book and hopefully they'll do an audio book soon. Yeah, I think, I think as well um, it's, it's available via Amazon, I think Booktopia, yeah. you can buy it now. Um, I know that with Jim's actual own book, which is this one here, which you can download from jims.net, we're actually in the process of getting it voiced and um, it's going to be available in Audible and an MP3 as well. Mm. So that one, keep an eye out for that. That will probably be around probably within the month on jims.net or via Audible. And I know the audio book is in the work for Jim's one, but it's a, it's a pretty honest read. I've had a look at it real briefly and it's, it's definitely no, no holds barred and I know you didn't filter a lot of stuff out, so it's a very, very honest well, account. Well, I, I gave Catherine links to all the, all the people who don't like me, including my sister, who <laughs> I fired. So yeah. <laughs> it's got the full story. So um, Jim's mowing Bay of Plenty Hawks Bay is tuned in. So hello there, Jim's mowing Bay of Plenty Hawks Bay. Caleb Templeman also says hello. So yeah. hello, Caleb. Thanks for tuning in. All right, let's get to a couple more of these questions. As I said, if you've got a question or comment, leave them in here and we'll try and get to it. So the next one is from Andy Bat via Facebook. And he's this is probably revealed with what's happened. Uh, what clinical research are you currently doing, Jim? Um, we're working on two forms right now. One of them is we're looking at the use of pheromones. Um, even though my, my research was all about human history, the actual implications are that it's biological. So we've been working with rats for the past decade or so. And one of the things we found was that the, um, the, the pheromones from rats that are mildly restricted in terms of food that can actually cause other rats to act in very different ways, become much better mothers and more exploratory. So what we're doing right now is figuring out, trying to figure out what's in the pheromones that are doing that because if we could reproduce this in people it would have a lot of potential for helping people from things like mental illness and depression and so forth so we're testing that and the other thing we're doing is we're looking at um, epigenetic changes in these rats which means um, changes in the functioning of their genes and what we another project is to actually work out ways of targeting those particular genes and turning them on or off so in effect, we're looking at ways of making very large changes in behavior and attitude with particular relevance to drug addiction, alcoholism, those kind of problems. And you spend a lot of, um, I know it's been, you know, obviously it was reported into the, um, into a lot of these media articles that you lift very modestly, but you put a lot of your, yes. your wealth into this sort of research. Yeah, I spend far more on scientific research than we live off, but you know, <laughs> we don't need that much. I don't think it's particularly good to live too rich. Um, it's not good for you. It's not good for your kids. We just like try to live like a normal couple. My, my car's 
um, about worth about ten thousand dollars, I guess. Mm. Just just normal, comfortable, happy lives. You don't need a lot of money. So I'll just keep going down here. So Hader Hussein's tuned in. It's on hi, gents. So yeah. hello, Hader. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. If you've got your question, James, just put it into the comments and we'll get to it. Josh Schumann says, G'day, Jim. G'day, Josh. Um, Daniel Donnelly goes, Joel, what do you most like about working for Jim? Well, yeah. it's one question for me. Um, oh, I, what I like working about Jim Daniel is very, it's very simple, right? He's, there's no red tape in Jim's. Jim is the CEO. If I want something done or have an idea, I can go to Jim. He might say, none of my ideas are stupid, but one of them might click and I can actually implement something to do as change. This whole Facebook Live thing was my idea. Jim, do you want to do this? Yep, no worries. Gave it a go. There was no red tape. I couldn't imagine any other CEO of a company sitting in this forum. Could you imagine someone, a CEO of the NAB Bank or someone like that doing this in a live forum? No one would. But, well, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I might say that very few of Joel's ideas are stupid. They're, they're pretty good ones. He's our... He's our digital guru. He's the guy that gets us in touch with the modern age. I'm not much into social media, but, but Joel knows that. And th things like that we never thought of, like how quickly do your websites load, is very important. I mean, we didn't know that, but if it takes more than three seconds to load, it's not going to work. And also redesigning landing pages and so forth. It, it's been, he's doing very well. Started, yeah. um, how long ago? Nine years ago? Yeah, eight, eight nine years ago in the doc, doc prep sort of side. Yeah, just yeah. doing just doing unskilled manual work and showed some ability, which is a, a good thing about a company like ours in that um, you don't get lost in the crowd. If somebody's got ability or they've got initiative, then they, they get found out pretty quick. One, one of our department's head is only 23. How old is Hannah? 23, yeah. Yeah, 23 years old, and she's now running an entire department. Um, head of our um, finance is about 30. Yes. And, and she's been running finance for several years. So if somebody's good at what they do, you don't have to amass seniority. It will be recognised very quickly. Yeah, Jim Jim's not one for big on credentials, right? So it's what you do, um, what type of person you are, um, and you know your initiative, how hard you work, all that sort of stuff. So you're judged on a fairly equal playing field regardless of age or previous qualifications or whatever. It's what you do in the business. And, um, and Jim and his wife have been great to me as well. They've treated me really well. And um, they've given me a lot of responsibility, which I appreciate. So thanks for the question, Daniel. Um, we'll keep going down here real quickly. Josh Schumann's gone. Question for you, Jim. What is your favourite Jim's company? I think it's like, <laughs> what, who's your favourite kid, right? Uh, well, mowing's always in my mm. heart. It's very hard. When I'm giving training, I always want to give mowing examples, and I have to try and re remind myself not to do other things. I was a mowing contractor for 15 years, and I love gardening, so it's kind of, I suppose I bleed green in some ways, but they're all good. They're all great. They're all great, but, but mowing is special. Yeah, mowing was the first. Um, Johnny De Idema, who's a cleaning franchisee, says, howdy, guys. Hi, John. Hi, John. We'll keep going down here. Okay, so James Bridge has gone. Going from a gym's franchise to now over 50-plus divisions, how do, you keep, how do you go keeping up with all the divisions and managing all of them? Well, the simple answer is that I don't because um, we have a divisional structure. So every division has somebody who looks after them, mostly their own business, mostly somebody who knows that industry. What we take care of is the general stuff, which is to do with customer service and to do with communication of leads and the software the franchise will use. And it's surprisingly very similar. So in most ways, our divisions actually run very much the same way. And the stuff that's specific is done by the divisional franchisors. And they have a lot of autonomy too. If the divisional franchisor wants to change the logo or the color or anything, we usually say it's fine. Yeah, it's totally not that really strict, is it, compared to what no. I know to other systems? It's, it's, it's very strict about things like customer service and service to franchisees. There are certain principles behind this. But there's a lot of areas where divisions make their own decisions. Even things like what price they sell franchises for or the exact fees they charge or all kinds of things. And, and also the advertising is all done by franchisors, not by us. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not anarchistic. There are certain very core principles that must be kept to. If you're tuning in, guys, for the first time, give us a like um, or leave a question or comment. We'll try and get to it. Let us know you're here. Um, next one here's a bit funny. Johnny Cage has gone, have you invented a superhuman pill yet? <laughs> well, that's the aim. Now, now, whether you're going to be superhuman or not, but if we could understand the core of human behaviour, like um, the epigenetics behind it and change it, you could have, sort of have somebody who was just an ordinary common and garden person and who suddenly becomes very 
inventive, very like a genius, really. And, and I don't think genius is mainly to do with intelligence. I think it's mainly to do with character. So the potential is somebody could actually take a pill and they're not going to be able uh, to you know, walk through walls or anything, but they might suddenly become incredibly capable, become like able to launch a fantastic business, you know, great new inventive ideas, all kinds of things, which, you know, is, is almost superhuman. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we'll go to the next. I'm very much hoping for that one. <laughs> so the next one is Stephen Archer via Facebook goes, Hi, Jim. Interesting to know you're a historian and that you've founded gyms to fund your research. My question is that as an aspiring entrepreneur, when did you know you had a good idea in gyms? And to other aspiring entrepreneurs, when or how do they know or should they know they've got a good idea? Uh, I don't think I ever had a good idea about a business. I, I just kind of backed into lawn mowing because it was my student job and that's all I knew how to do. When I bombed out of my academic career, I just started mowing lawns because that was all I knew. And for a long time, I didn't really think it was anything special. Even last launching the franchise, I thought it was temporary. I mean, after I launched the franchise, after a year or two, I, I very nearly sold out for a few hundred thousand dollars to somebody. Um, I just didn't see the potential of it for a long time. But my view is it's not so much whether you've got a good idea. It's a case of a thousand little ideas that improve what you do. So it almost doesn't matter where you start. It's, it's just getting better and better at what you do and every day saying, how can I do this better? Now, you might be totally different field. You might be in manufacturing. You might be in retail. But the same thing applies. Just look at it and say, okay, how can I improve this? And in the end, it's surprising where you end up. I'm quite surprised myself <laughs> being a nationwide figure. It never entered my mind that that would happen, not for a long time. So I hope that answered your question, Stephen. Uh, we'll keep going down here. Caleb said, keep up the good work, Jim. Thanks, Caleb. Scott Manton has gone, looking forward to meeting you, Jim, as I'm in the process of signing up for a mobile car detailing in regional WA. So he'll be coming to training and, and meeting you. Excellent. Yeah, look, I like as far as possible, I like to meet every, every trainee franchisees at least once. I, I come around and have meals at lunchtime and sometimes dinner, and, and I'd encourage every franchisee to say hello um, at some time, and usually they do, I think. Because I, I find that if I've done that, if a franchisee needs to talk to me later, they're more likely to get in contact. So if I can establish a little bit of a personal rapport in the beginning, and it's very useful for people to, to contact me. Even just this last week, I've had a couple of um, contacts with franchisees, emails actually, which has given me some very good ideas about how to make the system better. And you get a lot of requests for selfies and photos and that, I'm sure. Yeah, I take selfies. Because <laughs> the most common question my franchises get asked is, is there a really gym. a gym? Yeah. So I say, okay, to settle this once and for all, have your picture taken with me after training, and then you can show it and say, here's Jim. You can post, it, post it to your Instagram. And any photos you do take of Jim, Jim yeah. does have an Instagram now, so it's at Jim Penman. So if you do have any photos of Jim, at us or tag him, and I'm going to add it to his profile. So we'll keep going down here. Caleb says, shared the live video on my page. Thank you very much. Mehmet Ali Olmez says, keep up the great work, Joel and Jim. Our franchisees are enjoying the recent publicity on Sunrise, Sydney Herald Sun, etc." Yeah. Which is great. So Jim's been everywhere in the media. You've been dominating it for probably a week or a bit. We've never had anything like this, actually. It's amazing. Catherine's done a good job. It's been great. And the publishers are, are good too. Wiley, they've done a great job. That's uh, only unfortunate thing is you've got to buy the book. I can't give it away because it's too expensive. So I like my own book, which is... Yeah, well, this one here is the one you can actually download. So jims.net, yeah. we're making it into an audio book as well. But that's the one you can download for free from the site. But Catherine's book, yes, there is. It's, it's a very interesting book. It actually it has got so many interviews in it that it, it even surprised me a lot of this stuff. I didn't know what people were saying or doing in the early stages. So it was some things like who owned which region. I didn't even know a lot of stuff that went on. <laughs> Sean, Sean Daly goes to sca about scaffolding. So he keeps, he's asking about, is there going to be a gym scaffolding division? I guess that's one for the new development uh, business well, team. Yeah, but, but most divisions actually start not so much because we say we'd like to do gyms, whatever it is. Somebody comes to us and says, look, I'm already in this business. It looks good. It's got good potential. Can you help us to franchise it? And that, that's how normally most divisions start. So, sometimes we go and chase things ourselves, like uh, personal training, for example. It's one of my favourites. Yeah, so personal training's underway. I think the website's live now. Yes. Jim's, Jim's personal training. Just start that. So that's something. Because yeah. I'm a great believer in, in fitness and, and health. So 
I, we really tried to get done. Most most of the time, we had never thought about it. And things like test and tag, which is one of our best divisions, I didn't even know it existed as a, as a separate business until somebody came and says, "Hey, how about franchising it?" Well, you can tell Jim knows about personal training. He's only what you're only forty nine, fifty now. What? Yeah, with your fitness regime keeps you young. <laughs> I'm sixty six. There you go. Look at him. He's in great shape. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep going here. So. Jim's Meming says, back for another live stream. Thanks, Jim's Meming, for tuning in, tuning in. And you left a question here which said, can Jim read his book for the audio book? This is a great time oh, question. Oh, you don't want to hear this. My voice is <laughs> not good. We have got some people interviewed. Joel's been looking yeah. for them, and uh, they got much better voices than me. You'd, not, you'd, you'd, you'd go to sleep if I tried to read my own book. It's a great... It's a I'd great... probably go to sleep if I tried to read my own book. <laughs> It's a great question, Jim's man. We actually did, we did explore this with Jim. He said, do you want to read your own audio book? And we looked at studios and stuff. But the actual, Jim did obviously didn't want to with his voice, but the time involved in actually doing the audio book's a lot. So um, Jim's time's too valuable. So we, he's doing the media and stuff now. So We've got somebody with studio. a proper Australian accent, though. We're not going to be some yank reading it. So no. it should sound all right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. It's a local Aussie talent. Okay, so Jim's, James Bridge has gone here again. Have you had a franchisee, for example, from Jim's mind, but another franchise in a different division? Sorry, what does that mean? So have you had a franchisee, for example, from Jim's mowing, but another franchise? So maybe saying this, someone owns a mowing franchise, have they gone and bought another service division like a Jim's Cleaning or Jim's Handyman or something like that? Uh, one or two cases. Like I think we've got a, a, a cleaning person with a window cleaning, something like that. But it's very rare because usually there's um, – there's plenty of work in their own division, so why would they want a second division? And the other thing too is um, what, what a franchisee can do is do what we call take work cross-divisionally. So if you're a, a window cleaning, I was talking to a window cleaning franchisee in the Gold Coast who's a bit short of work. So I said, okay, you're short of work, but um, <coughs> excuse me. He, um, there's, a, there's a stack of unserviced cleaning work why don't you take some of that and also because he was the carpenter so i said there's all this handyman work so there's so much work around that you could take from other divisions and the other division gets priority but if they can't handle it you can have it so you could be you could be earning treble what you are now without buying a second yeah. franchise which is better because our fees are a, a flat rate rate plus um plus lead fee <coughs> so it's Owning two divisions is is going to take your fees up, but if you've got a single franchise, you can employ as many people as you like, and it's the same base fee. So I'll keep running down here. So Raman Shrisha, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Hi Jim, I'm a cleaning franchisee. I'm oh, so yeah. happy with my business and my franchise. Or Arthur from Melbourne is the best of the best. We need more people like him. So great to hear that. We do, we do. We're always looking amongst our franchisees to try and find the talent leadership. It's, it's the thing we're most short of. We always need more franchisees, but we need great leaders even more. Arthur's good. It's so a Bill Cobb and Ogle who's tuned in. Hi, Bill. He's yeah. gone great work, guys. Kayla, uh, where is it? Kayla NG Griffiths says, Jim's the man. Still <laughs> the man. Um, Stephen Archer has gone, what do you enjoy working more on now? Working on your history research or your research stuff or running a successful business? What oh, do you enjoy more? I love it all. It's great fun. Mm. It, it's just like... The whole thing's an incredible buzz. I say to anybody, there's nothing like being in business. It's really fun. And history is my passion. But I don't spend a lot of time on the research because I'm not a biochemist or a gen geneticist. I'm a, I'm a businessman. So I just, I just meet with them occasionally and go through the research and talk to them about what they're doing and help to make plans and, and direct the research. But I don't, I don't do it myself. Whereas, I mean, I'm in gyms every day. So with your work, though, how much do you think in terms of hours is divided up into gym stuff and then to, let's say, research stuff on average? Well, directly on my research, not very much at all. You know, it, it could be, like I said, a half an hour a week on average. Um, I do a lot of other stuff, though. I'm, I'm always listening to talking books and stuff. I'm listening to a, a talking book now about the um, – from the great courses about empires before Alexander and and – and I'm, as I'm listening to that, I'm, I'm thinking about it and trying to work out certain historical patterns, which is to do with my research. So I do a lot of reading and thinking, but in actual association with the research itself, I don't spend a lot of time on it. So hopefully that answers your question. So Edward has joined. Dominic Bushell has joined. Hi, guys. Um, hey, David Sainz asked a question here, which is a good one. What's growing on the farm? So the farm you have, what are you growing on it? Uh, we've got potatoes. In fact, so many we couldn't use them. We've sold them. We've grown corn. 
we've got some beautiful trees like fruit trees like there's some lovely nectarines and um, uh, figs we've got great fig trees and uh, a lot of blackberries actually because there's a lot of blackberries around there so we have them as well there's silver beet there's, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff and it's getting more all the time the idea is to turn the whole place into a sort of permaculture food forest with nuts and fruit and everything and make you make it a very big thing but that'll take a while so thanks to everyone tuning in currently remember give us a like or a share or give us a comment just to let us know what you want to keep us doing this the more likes and the more comments and questions we get the more jim will do this stuff so caleb's gone here can the public visit inside the gym's head office or no that's the first time i've heard of that one oh if people ask to come and uh, come visit us we never say no there's nothing secret about gyms no our address is there on google my business i guess if you mm -hmm. ever maybe flick us through an email caleb and we can i guess we never had a request for a tour i guess well we, we're uh, very open at gyms if somebody wants to launch a you know their own franchise they can probably um division uh, sorry their own franchise system they could probably just come to us and do their franchise or training we don't really hide anything in gyms at all it's very open yeah, we don't um we don't make them sign before they come to training, right? They no, can just, no, no. We 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 won't even let a person um, buy a regional franchise till they've been to training because they need to know what it's about before they get into it. And we also encourage, well, we discourage franchisees from signing before they've done the training. So they get to we we tell them everything. If they want to take their information and go, they can they can do that. That's it. So I'll get to one of more of the preset questions here. So keep your questions and comments coming through, guys. I will get to them. Edward Bushel via Facebook is gone. I recall you stating something along the lines of clients being the most important aspect of a business and how if you delight them, you gain their loyalty and earn future leads. Richard Branson has been saying as quotes, clients do not come first, employees come first. If you take care of your employees, they will take care of the clients. Is this difference in focus accounted for by your franchise structure of gyms or is this an inherent difference between you and Richard Branson's business philosophy? It's well, a very technical question, right? <laughs> Actually, yeah. it's wrong. Um, hand me the book. Right. Now, in, if we can show it to the camera. Yes, just show it up there. I'm going to actually show the, um, the the Jim's Group Values, which is in front of the book, and it's also in front of, well, of every email that I send. Our first priority is the welfare of our franchisees. We are also passionate about customer service. We sign only franchisees and franchisors. We are convinced we'll succeed. So fundamentally, we don't put customers first, we put franchisees first. But I, I also agree with Richard Branson that you've got to really look after your employees. In, in a sense, your internal um, people are the source of everything. I've got brilliant employees and we really try to look after them. We don't always pay them as much as they'd like. Is that right, Joel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, no, but Richard Branson is quite correct. It really is. Um, it's, it's silly to put... If you, if, you, if you focus too much on your customers and your franchisees or your staff aren't happy, you can't give good customer service. You, um, I make no bones about it. If there's a conflict of interest between my franchisees and my clients, franchisees come first. And, and also, I tell you something too, if I've got a franchisee who is rude or unhelpful to one of my staff, I will tell them off very smartly to behave and act with courtesy. Yeah, that, that happens sometimes, you know, mm. things can get them and Jim does back up his staff as well. So he's really good in that aspect. There's a, here's a different question here. So Sebi Scheinberg goes, what, what did you have for brekkie this morning, Jim? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Oatmeal flavoured with sultanas and an apple. There you go. Hopefully that answers your question. All healthy. Right. Very healthy. You are very healthy. I don't see you eating much. You, you, have, one, you have one junk food thing that you, you can't resist. Sure. Yeah. Chocolate. Chocolate. Every time there's <laughs> chocolate in the office. I went out with my son mm. last night to a um, to a buffet place in, in East Burwood with my probably barely there, but usually <laughs> I eat okay. Uh, Jim's very healthy. Uh, we'll keep going and hear the question. So Jared Bywaters, who is a franchisee in mowing, I believe, he's via the Facebook page, he's gone. What would you consider the best way to maximise leads throughout the quieter months? And what has worked for you in regards to getting referrals? I understand great service is a major part of this. However, also asking for help. So is Jared mowing? Uh, Jared is mowing, yes. Um, it's actually fairly characteristic that the best operators will make more money in the off-season than they do in the peak season. Because if you're mowing lawns in the peak, which in the southern states of Australia is... is uh, spring more north it's it's in summer um 
the grass grows so fast, you're just pushing lawnmower around, which isn't very lucrative. Now, the more profitable money is in jobs like gutter clearing and pruning and landscaping and those kinds of extras. So the, the great skill, Jared, is you've got to be able to upsell. It means you've got your regular client and you talk to your client about what else can you do. And there's, there's various ways to do this. We teach people in training which are very powerful. You don't ask a person directly, hey, can I do this? Because that's, well, you can, but it, you can get knocked back. But if you say something like, oh, look, Mr. Jones, look, it's, it's um, great doing business with you and your lawn's looking good now. Um, if there's anything else you'd like done around the place, like you'd like your gutters cleared or, you know, the, the pruning done or rubbish removed or and you just ask me, I'm happy to help. So you just offer that. Or even just talking about what you've been doing. Oh, look, I'm sorry, I'm a bit grubby. I've just been cleaning some gutters for my last client. So you just you just use those kinds of approaches with clients and, and get the idea across that you do extra stuff. And, of course, what you've got to do is to wow the client with what you're doing. Another thing to do, too, obviously, is to go for referrals. And there's some very simple ways to do that, too, which, we, again, we teach in training. So when you finish with a job, say, if I'm just on a job for Joel, I'd say, okay, here, Joel, here's my business card, and here's a couple of extra in case you know anybody who wants work done. So you just, and then you hand it over three business cards. Now, now that's all you need to do. There's no direct question. There's no demand that Joel do anything. But you let, I let Joel know that, um, I'm happy to do extra work and I'll remind him in case he knows somebody and just become skilled in the extras. That's the, the real skill of it. Learn the skills and you can learn that through your meetings. You can learn it from YouTube. You can learn it from your franchise or your fellow franchisees. Of course, if you're independent, then some of those won't work, but the YouTube's great. Just keep on learning. Um, we find people who do TAFE courses do particularly well because they can do extras. See, fertilize is the other one. See, the interesting thing about extras when you're mowing lawns, is that it's often it's often their best when their mowing is weakest. So in the middle of winter, for example, um, you could do drainage, which isn't that difficult. It's a matter of digging a hole and putting some aggie pipe and some rocks in and stuff like that, or moss dealing with moss or pruning is a wintertime job. If it's very dry, well then you want to put mulching down and you can drought proof the garden or put trickle watering systems in and stuff. And you can learn how to do all these things. So it's a pretty normal pattern. The better you are, the more likely you are to make more money in the off season. So hopefully that answers your question there, Jared. Um, and, then, your... and the nice thing I should say about that is that, is that your extras, your hourly rate is, is usually a lot higher. So for example, if I was going to mow somebody's lawns, it would take me 35 minutes to mow typical lawn mow and edge and take the grass away. Um, I charge, let's say, Melbourne these days about $45. So allowing for travel, 10 minutes for travel and getting the money and stuff, that's about 60 bucks an hour. But if I offer to clear somebody's gutters and I charge them, say, 120 bucks, that'll take me about three quarters of an hour. So my hourly rate's like $180 an hour because I'm already there. There's no travel. So the key to good earnings is is upselling in particular, and then ask for referrals. So that's a great extensive answer there for you, Jared. I'll just run through a couple of these quickly and try and get to as many as we can. So Guy Edward via Facebook has gone, has Jim got a gym? Or is there Jim's gym? So we've got Jim's PT, but have you got a gym? We hope to have one soon. We've got a conference centre here for the training, and they offered us for a gym. Um, why we haven't got Jim already is because we've got an absolutely rotten council. And if anybody counts from the you know, outrageous child is looking at you, well, good luck to you. They're horrible. It's <laughs> taken us two years to try and get permission to put a health club in here. And we've asked every training session. We're going to have, and I hope by the end of this year, we'll have a racquetball court, which I love because racquetball is really fun, a gymnasium, and we're going to enclose and heat the swimming pool. For people who don't know, Jim is a... Um a really passionate racquetball player, and you're really good at it too. Well, I play with a squash, actually. Racquetball is supposed to be better, so it'll right. be fun. I'll, I'll get to – you can have a game with me. No, oh, you'll run rings around me, Jim. I reckon <laughs> I've got no cardio. Um, next one here, Talina Garfit via Facebook has gone, okay, so is your name David or Jim? Now, a bit of background for this. When the media come out today, a lot of the fact they use was Jim's name is not Jim, it's David. And everyone's mm. uh, on the memes and stuff that was going around, people would do – Jim's mowing, then cross out the gym and put Dave's mowing and, and change it oh, you know, to Dave's this, Dave's that. So 
Uh, is it David or Jim? What are you called mainly in your my, real life? My legal name is David James Penman. Nobody ever calls me James. But when I left school, I went to work on a farm for a bit, and um, there was a young guy there called David. So I said, that's oh, all, call me Jim. And I got used to it. So I've called myself Jim ever since. But um, I've never changed my legal name. So I, was, I still sign myself David James. But nobody, the only people who call me David would be relatives who knew me from when I was a kid. So, but I'm used to that too. My, my, my parents used to call me David, but they're, they're gone now. So I've never heard anyone here call you David at any time. No, actually I was doing, when I did that sunrise thing this morning, the, um, I was listening on the phone and they, and somebody said, David, and I didn't even recognize the name. <laughs> <Is> it? <laughs> yeah. It's got to that extent, hasn't it? I didn't, I didn't answer to it. I had to, had to uh, Jim. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Okay, that, great question. I'll try and try, run through as many of these as we can quickly. Thanks for tuning in. If you've tuned in, give us a like or a comment or question and we'll keep going. Um, I'll touch on this one again. We do touch on it every week, but I'll go through it again uh, for anyone new. Joseph Bogan Church, classic name. Do you like all the Jim's memes and other classics like Jim's drifting on the side of a drift car? I'd say it's good for business. Yeah, it's good for business. We, we, we don't mind. And yeah. we've actually got a competition we're, we're working on. We won't reveal too much now, but um, it will take memes into account, won't it? So... Um, We're going to run a prize for people who can work out the best meme, the that, best Jim's meme, the best, craziest new division. There we go. So, Pro probably not looking. We had a, we had a um, national conference some years ago when everybody had to come along dressed in a new Jim's division. And the best one there was, was Jim's hitman. And they, <laughs> they had a white shirt with a little black gun on it. So. Someone's gone here. Um, Chris Rhodes has gone, what town did you start Jim's mine? Or what town did you start your first mine contracting business? Nobody, I guess? Nobody. Melbourne, but what suburb? Was there a particular suburb? Do you uh, remember your area was? Well, I, was, uh, I suppose I was living in, in uh, Baldwin at the time. That was after I was first married. Yeah, that would have been... So let's say the Baldwin Eastern Suburbs type area. Yeah. Oh, always in the east. Yeah. I've moved around a bit. I went from Baldwin to East Burwood to um, Blackburn, which is where I franchised the business, to Wonga Park, to uh, Park Orchards, to... Um, Bayswater to Murubak. So, yeah, we've moved all over. Always in the east. Yeah. So Jim's memeing has gone probably already won. Yes, Jim's memeing. You'll be a fair chance in that competition when we run it. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll keep going here. Someone's gone Jim's meat. I've never... Jim's meat? Jim's butchers, I guess. Jim's... Well, if done. it was home delivery, we, we don't get into retail. It's, it's not nearly we understand. What we've just started is Jim's fruit and veg home delivery. So that's the kind of thing we would do. So if you can... If you've got a business model that's you know good at delivering meat to households and you've got a way of making good money out of it i mean it's got to mean i'll make at least 60 bucks an hour for us to consider it well come and talk to us so there's one here from sean day this is an interesting one i think it's worth answering this one sean day gone since me and you have no scaffolding would you team up with a small company so he obviously works for a small company what what advice would be for sean if he thinks his company is a good fit for us well, Sean, you've got a... Uh, I think he works for a company, but he thinks the company, the scaffolding company would be a good fit for us. So I guess tell the boss to get in contact with us, yeah, I guess. Yeah, just tell the boss to, to contact me. You know, I'm very easy to contact. You just go to the website and just put contact. It'll come through and I'll see it. it I'm, I'm very easy to contact. Most people just start by just sending an email and just asking and then they surprised to get a response from me, I suppose. Yeah, that's usually, true. Yeah. Usually within I don't believe it. They don't believe it, I guess. Yeah, and then we say, come yeah. and have a talk about it. And we talk to the team and see if it can work. As, as I said, not everything would suit. Um, we won't franchise anything where we can't see our franchisees making at least 60 bucks an hour. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. Yeah, that's a good. So I was wondering if your Caleb's gone, do you play Fortnite, Jim? Have you ever heard of the game Fortnite? It's probably the most popular video game in the world at the moment. No. There's the answer, no. I think Jim would be good at Fortnite if I ever showed it to him, but I think, as you said, you would get addicted to Fortnite, I reckon, but you don't want to get addicted to video games. What is Fortnite? Fortnite's like a battle royal game, like 100 people all online going to a battlefield, and it's the last one to survive. You've got to try and shoot each other and knock each other out and stuff like that to be the last one standing. I used to be addicted to things like um, Age of Empires and stuff, but, but I kind of like the political side. I like building up you know, civilizations and things rather than shoot them down. I do enjoy laser tag. Actually, you go into a you go, when you go into a, a maze and you shoot people with a color lights. That's really fun. And mm. Nothing. I like to get my church buddies into that. My um, Bible study group and we go in and shoot each other. That's that's really great. Fun. <laughs> Thing a lot of people don't know about him. He's very competitive. So um. Yeah. Well, a little bit. A little you bit. got a bit of a competitive <laughs> streak in you. 
It's so, funny. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like actually shooting somebody down in real life. I just love that. <laughs> So I'll go on with one of these last questions and we'll call it there. Thanks to everyone who's tuned in. If you've got a question or comment, please leave them or like the page or share it. Um, the more you do that, post this as well. Um, the better, the more we can do this sort of stuff. So Jared Costello has gone, get age in via Facebook. He's gone. This is an interesting one because it's a bit of a topical one with the government. That's why I want to bring it up. He's gone, if the climate was right for it, would you start Jim's pill testing division? I know you probably wouldn't, but... He goes, but what is your stance on drugs? He's gone specifically surrounding the current war against music festivals and the hard line the government is taking. So I don't know if you've heard, but there's a pill testing and yeah, the government's no, no, pushing no, it. No, 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 I'm up on all that. Yeah. Um, look, um, first of all, I personally think that drugs are horrifying. I don't drink alcohol. I believe caffeine is a dangerous drug. So I'm not one of your, your, your hippie types. And <laughs> I've never been to a musical festival in my life. Hmm. So... Personally, I'm strongly against drugs, but I do think making them illegal probably does more harm than good. And if it was up to me, I'd basically try and legalize it and control it. And, and because if people want drugs, they can get it. My kids, you know, I've got, I've got girls 15, 16 years old. They can they could get drugs anywhere. It's so easy. You can't stop it. All you're doing is creating this vast criminal underworld and having all these overdoses and dreadful things that go on. I mean, people shouldn't take drugs. I hate them. I really, really loathe them. And, and they have terrible effects. I think they have worse effects than some people think psychologically. But I wouldn't make them illegal because it's just not effective. I mean, look, if you want to make things illegal, you should do what Chairman Mao did when he came to power in China. I'm not a great fan of Chairman Mao. <laughs> case of that. But he shot all the drug dealers. And then he said to the drug users, you've got one choice. You give it up or we'll shoot you too. And it stops. Now that's obviously come on stuck then. So, mm. but if you want to stop it, that's what you've got to do. You, you've just got to be really harsh and make it so that people are too scared to use it. Otherwise, legalize it. Legalize it. And and I know I think marijuana should be legalized. I think marijuana is dreadful stuff. I really do. I think it causes terrible problems of personality. I've seen people who've been in this stuff. I wouldn't want any of my kids to use it. But making it illegal is the wrong response. It's like, well, like smoking. Smoking is a dreadful thing. It kills millions of people a year and causes people to. It's it's a dreadful waste of money. It's filthy. It's 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 a horrible. But but I wouldn't want it illegal. Or alcohol. I hate alcohol. I really really loathe alcohol. But they tried banning it in America, and that was a terrible idea because it causes it's it's a gift to criminals. So yeah, but, yeah. and if it was legal. I would get involved with Jim's pill testing if someone came in with a good business. Why not? It's it's a legitimate business. In fact, it's a, it could save people's lives. I think, yeah, well, it's proven to do that. So um, there's, there you go. There's a very comprehensive and honest answer, Joseph. I don't think you get that from many other um, CEOs of large companies. Let's go through a couple more of comments here and we'll end it. Jim's memeing has gone, get high, the beautiful smell of fresh lawn. Well, if that does it for you, go for it. Uh, Beck Zerbe has gone, don't forget JBI, Jim's building inspections, do meth testing. Which they do. I know they do a lot of contamination. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah. So sort of in a way, um, they sort well, of... Well, we're testing the house. There's nothing illegal. If people are moving into a house and they're saying, is there dangerous stuff there? So there's no breach of the law in that because it's not the people themselves that want to, have been using the meth that have got the problem. It's just somebody who's moving into the house. Yeah, post post as well. I think, you know, if there's been a house that's been used for that sort of stuff, they can come in and um, decontaminate and do that sort of stuff. So there actually is sort of, I guess... In a way, a division that does that, which is Jim's hazardous um, waste removal. Or yes, but I don't know whether they get into pill testing. Not, no, <laughs> I can't not. imagine seeing a person with a Jim's pill test. Well, those shirts do run around, but legitimately as a business, you know. Well, if it ever became illegal, it, it, they could maybe lay claim to the service. That's how our business works. They can say, okay, we'd like to control Jim's pill testing and we'll provide that service to people because we're not wanting to have a test for meth, so we can, we can do your testing for you. I mean, that might happen. So, so it's a great question, Jared, and um, we appreciate it. So we'll leave it there. Jim's got to run. It's been more than half an hour, so thank you very much, Jim, for hanging around post the time. Thank you, everyone, who left a comment or gave us a like. Um, the replay will be up on the page straight away. It'll also be on YouTube. Jim's actually got a personal now Instagram, um, at Jim Penman. Give him a follow and also a personal Facebook page, which is Jim Penman Official. We push all Jim's content and anything he's got, any thoughts on that, we will push to there. So give us a like and a follow, and um, you can stay up to date with this sort of stuff. If you want more of this type of stuff, as we said, please put a comment or like to let us know that you've been engaged with it and we can keep doing more of it. So thanks again for tuning in and thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. And we'll plug the book again. 
So it's called Jim's Book. So it's not hard to remember as a title. Um, it's a very good, very good cover by Catherine, um, and that's available via Amazon now and Booktopia. And we've also got Jim's own book, which is his self-written um, autobiography, which is available on Jim's.net. And also we've got an audio book version coming really soon. So thanks again for everyone who tuned in, and um, have a good night. And hopefully we can do this again real soon. Yeah. See you later. See you later.